Hello this is KYC News. We provide you with the most up-to-date and reliable information for the day. First and foremost, we want to achieve perfect health with a sincere desire. Crowded shopping mall in Ukraine gets struck by a Russian missile strike. That is why I oppose it, Ursula. UN implores warring Libyan parties to agree on elections this week. Crowded shopping mall in Ukraine gets struck by a Russian missile strike. One of the most daring terrorist assaults in European history, according to President Volodymyr Zelensky, took place on Monday when Russian long-range bombers fired a missile at a crowded mall in the Ukrainian city of Kremenchuk. Many of the more than 1,000 afternoon shoppers and employees who were inside the mall, according to Zelensky, were able to flee. Emergency personnel rushed to the scene to scour the concrete and shattered metal for victims and extinguish fires as enormous plumes of black smoke, dust, and orange flames rose from the ruins. People unlooked in horror as they saw how a routine activity like shopping might turn into a horror. Rescue workers continued to explore the burning rubble into early Tuesday, altering the casualty numbers. Emergency services in Ukraine announced late on Monday that at least 16 people had died and about 60 had been injured. As one soldier drilled into what was left of the shopping center's roof, soldiers labored through the night to move sheets of twisted metal and broken concrete. After the fire was put out, clouds of dark smoke could still be seen rising from the remains as drones buzzed overhead. According to Volodymyr Dimrheichkin, a representative of emergency services, we are working to destroy the construction so that it is able to get machinery in there since the metal pieces are very large and big, and disassembling them by hand is impossible. The UN Security Council convened an emergency meeting in New York on Tuesday to discuss the incident at Ukraine's request. Dmitry Polyansky, the country's first deputy permanent representative to the UN, made the first official statement from the Russian government regarding the missile strike. He claimed multiple inconsistencies, which he didn't specify, and asserted on Twitter that the incident was a provocation by Ukraine. Despite the fact that Russian attacks have also targeted other malls, theaters, hospitals, kindergartens, and apartment buildings, Russia has consistently denied targeting civilian facilities. The missile attack took place as Western leaders vowed to continue supporting Ukraine and as the major economies of the world readied fresh sanctions against Russia, including a cap on oil prices and heavier import taxes. NATO intended to roughly eightfold the size of its rapid reaction forces, to 300,000 soldiers, and the U.S. appeared prepared to agree to Zelensky's request for more air defense systems. That is why I oppose it, Ursula. Ursula von der Leyen, the head of the European Commission, said she opposes the concept of a boycott of the G20 summit if Vladimir Putin, the leader of Russia, attends. Vladimir Putin's participation in the G20 conference does not warrant a boycott, according to Ursula von der Leyen, the head of the European Commission. We ought to seriously consider whether the G20 will be shut down. As a result, I oppose this, von der Leyen said in an interview with German TV channel ZDF outside of the G7 conference. The G20 format, according to von der Leyen, is more significant for developing as well as developed nations. She feels that it is important for people to talk to one another about the state of the world today. The G20 Leader Summit is anticipated to take place in Bali on November 15 and 16. All G20 leaders, including Russian President Vladimir Putin, have been invited. The G20 meeting will be held on the Indonesian island of Bali in November, and the United States and a number of allies have already tried to exert pressure on Indonesia, the G20 chair this year, to prevent Russia from attending because of Ukraine. The G20 conference is focused on economic issues, not political ones, the Indonesian government responded, adding that the invitation to Russia has been extended and cannot be rescinded. At the same time, Ukraine was invited to the summit by the Indonesian government at the request of the US and its allies. UN implores warring Libyan parties to agree on elections this week. In order to facilitate the long-awaited voting at the earliest possible date, the UN political chief urged Libya's opposing factions to reach an understanding on procedures guiding the transition to polls during discussions in Geneva later this week. During negotiations in Cairo from June 12 to 20, according to Rosemary De Carlo, the rival parties came to a broad consensus on most of the problematic sections of the proposed 2017 constitution, which she deemed commendable. 
oil rich since the longtime tyrant Muammar Gaddafi was overthrown and killed in an uprising supported by NATO in 2011. Libya has been racked by conflict. The nation was then divided between two rival governments, one in the east, supported by military leader Khalifa Haftar, and another in the capital city of Tripoli, sponsored by the UN. Each side is backed by various militias and international governments. The House of Representatives, which is located in the east of Libya, and the High Council of State, which is located in the west, met in Cairo for the first time since the proposed constitution was adopted in 2017, according to DiCarlo. We are happy that the leaders of both chambers have accepted Stephanie Williams' invitation to a meeting in Geneva on June 28 and 29, where they will debate and hopefully agree on the rules regulating the interim period before elections. All of Libya's international allies, including the 15 Security Council members, were asked by De Carlo to call on the leadership of the two chambers to take the opportunity given by the accord struck in Cairo and make elections happen. Elections were scheduled for December 24 in Libya, however they were postponed by the Prime Minister Abdelhamid Biabaled temporary government in Tripoli. The failure dealt a severe setback to global attempts to put an end to a decade of anarchy in Libya. Biaba's refusal to resign cast doubt on the legitimacy of his appointment. In retaliation, the nation's eastern-based parliamentarians chose Fadi Bashaga, a potent former interior minister who currently leads a different government from CERT, as prime minister. After taking hesitant measures toward unification last year, the competing administrations are again seizing control. De Carlo urged efforts for national reconciliation and cautioned that the ongoing political divides are making the security situation in and around Tripoli dangerous. She cautioned that if armed groups prepare to back Debaba or Bashaga because the issue of Libya's president has not been settled the chance of an escalation grows. According to Libyan media sources following the recent meeting in Cairo, the main point of contention was the qualifications for a presidential run. The reports state that the Tripoli-based council insisted on forbidding military personnel from running for the top position in the nation. This decision was reportedly made in response to Haftar, a divisive military leader who announced his intention to run in the elections in December, while the lawmakers in the East advocated for allowing military personnel to run. Is defense a serious issue for Europe? Europeans are taking defense seriously, if slowly. Military spending is on the rise, preparedness is being rebuilt, and the focus of defense staffs in European capitals has once again shifted to collective defense. This is due in equal measure to shifting threat perceptions following Russia's use of force to undermine the European security architecture and the recognition that the transatlantic relationship requires serious repair in the wake of Donald Trump's election as President of the United States. Europeans are rediscovering the value of NATO as the preferred institution for planning their collective defense during this period. The EU's defense goals are still tightly bound to the paradigm of crisis management and minimizing market fragmentation in the defense sector. The basic conflict underlying this institutional dynamic is whether national governments should retain the power to use force or should cede it to a capable supranational body. The applications for NATO membership from Finland and Sweden speak volumes in this regard. The two main factors influencing the future are the return of nuclear deterrence and the German Bundeswehr's acquisition strategy. The fundamental principle of NATO's collective defense continues to be nuclear sharing. In the same vein, the defense industrial markets will adopt Berlin's buying priorities as their own. A Hindu man provides free maintenance on the mosque's entrance. The proprietor of an engineering firm chose not to charge for fixing a mosque gate during a period when there is so much animosity motivated by religion. According to him, it was his gift to the house of worship. His generosity is well received, particularly at this time when the Modi government is inciting hatred against millions of Muslims. At the Badar Hussein Juma Masjid Marakini in Kepa village, Bantwal, Dakshina Kannada, the incident was reported. Muhammad Ali, a member of the mosque committee, stated, the ancient gate of the mosque have corroded, and we were financially unable to replace the same. The committee that just restored the mosque chose to temporarily fix the current gate rather than purchase a new one. We asked Adaya of Sai Engineering Works to fix the gate about 10 days ago. He completed the quick repair for a little over 5,000 rupees. He refused to accept the money when we offered to pay him, claiming that it was intended for a mosque. We are touched by this action. The material and labor, According to Udaya K of Sai Engineering Works, K to Begila will like, cost roughly 5,000 rupees. He mentioned that some materials had been donated to us by mosque members. We have a long-standing relationship with the mosque, and we receive the majority of its artwork. 
I chose not to build them for the gate repair work out of goodwill as this is a place of worship. In general, we comply with requests for assistance or donations from people visiting from temples and other locations, he said. Thank you.